my father's place, proclaiming Jesus Christ to the world. Good morning and welcome to my father's place. I'll be speaking today a message titled, Kicking at His Commands, from Romans 12.1 and 1 Samuel chapters 2 and 3. The Lord says, why do you kick at my commands? Why would he ask that? I'm going to pray and then I'll tell you. Oh Lord, I used to be one who kicked at your commands. I used to be one who mocked you. But oh my Lord, you brought me low. And that's when I looked up. And that's when I saw that you were much more than a character in a story. But you are God the Son. And I determined and set my face and ran to know you intimately. I pray that be the outcome today for those who hear and heed. In your name, amen. So he says, why do you kick at my commands? What does he mean by that? Who is he speaking to? He's speaking to today's church. Because you have determined and decided that it's not important to obey his commandments regarding the spirit, and that it's not important to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing, to him. So, because you do not offer yourself and because you do not obey his commands, you sin against him, thereby revealing that you don't know him. And how have you sinned? How have you sinned? You have not obeyed this one thing. You have not obeyed Luke 24, 49 and Acts 1, 4 through 5, but this is the crux of it, and this is from where it all begins. Romans 12, 1, Therefore I urge, that is, beseech you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. That's from the NIV. And the reason that he says that to the church at Rome is because they hadn't done it. And he's referring to Jesus Christ's commandment that you must go to your own cross, and that's from Matthew 16, 24. You must go to your own cross and offer yourself to him so he crucifies your sin nature, purifies your heart, and then fills you with himself and the Father and the Spirit. You have said... I do not need to offer my body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. You have said you do not need to do that. I have heard it from many in today's so-called church. But he says you must. And by not doing it, you kick at his commands. What does that mean? To scoff at them, to mock them to kick them to the side, so to speak, and go your own way. You sin by refusing to obey and become a sacrifice. The sacrifice he requires, you scoff at. And why is this relevant to you? If you do kick at his commands, then he will judge you. For they are commands. And if you say you love him, you should obey him. My continual exhortations and warnings about this are not by chance. You only have so long on this earth to obey him. Then when you stand before him, if you have not obeyed him, if you had kicked against his commands, then you will be judged and sentenced to hell. I don't want that. He doesn't want that. He doesn't desire any parish. But that all come to repentance. He's speaking to the church. And you will say to me, what? I am saved? And I will say to you, no, you are not. You are dead. 
you are still dead because you are still sinning. You are a dead person walking. Your sin nature is alive and well, instead of crucified. You have not obeyed his commands, but have kicked at them and said they aren't necessary, scoffing at them. So he says there's ample evidence that you have not obeyed him. The most ample and profound is that you have created your own Jesus, just as I had. You worship another Jesus, one who requires nothing of you, one who doesn't want you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. So you continue to disobey him. You do not know him if you disobey him. Those who love him, obey him. You do not love him if you do not obey him. He has asked me to show you your condition through three who kicked at his commands, his requirements regarding sacrifices, though they were religious. The Lord says, you are like them. Eli did not hear from the Lord. Go to 1 Samuel. Eli did not hear from the Lord, even though he was the chief priest. His sons did not hear from the Lord, even though they were priests. Because they did not know the Lord, because they disobeyed the Lord regarding his requirements for sacrifice. He and his sons disobeyed those requirements. And the requirements are in Exodus 29, 13, and 22 regarding sacrifices and what was to be given and who was to get what in the days where the sacrificial system was in place. And if you say that's not in place, then I say Romans 12, 1, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, which is holy and pleasing to the Lord. So they, they disobeyed him, Hophni and Phinehas, his sons, and I'll show it to you. But so did Eli, because he didn't rebuke them and remove them. And it is the same today. Sinners continue down the broad path and through the wide gate that leads to destruction. Sinners continue to occupy pulpits across the globe. And what they teach are lies. And no one removes them from their positions. I have yet to see it. Eli's sons defied the law that the fat and the choice portions of the meat were to be offered to the Lord by the people of Israel as a sacrifice. They could eat the rest, but those parts were for him. That was to ensure that they put him above themselves and that they put his desires above their own. That was the whole purpose of the sacrificial system. So in 1 Samuel 2.12, now the sons of Eli were worthless men, literally sons of Belial, Belial being the devil. They did not know the Lord. And the custom, that is the law, which I've told you about from Exodus, the law of the priests with the people. When any man was offering a sacrifice, this is what they did. The sons of Eli did this. The priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand. Then he would thrust his fork into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. Thus they did in Shiloh, which was where the Ark of the Covenant was at this time, the symbol of the Lord's presence because this was just, this was prior to David and prior to the establishment of Solomon's temple and all. So thus they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. That was not according to the Lord. They would take before the meat had been properly offered. So in 1 Samuel 15 also before they, that is those making the offering burned the fat the priest servant would come and say to the man who was sacrificing give the priest meat for roasting 
as he will not take boiled meat from you, only raw. Again, that was in defiance of what the law was that God had established. So the servant of Eli's sons obeyed the sons who commanded him to join in them in defying the Lord. At their command, he forcefully thrust in the fork and insisted that they give him raw meat. Why was he reprimanded by those who were offering a sacrifice? Why was he reprimanded? They did. They said, wait a minute, you're not supposed to do this. It, it was because they took what they wanted. They did not respect the Lord. They defied the Lord. They kicked at what he required for a sacrifice. If they were challenged by those who were making the offering, the servant would threaten to take the meat by force. 1 Samuel 2.16, If the man said to him, They must surely burn the fat first, and then take as much as you desire, then he would say, No, but you shall give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Verse 17, Thus the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord. That is great in the Lord's eyes. For the men despised, that is, they scorned the offering of the Lord. So, this sin was very great in the Lord's eyes, just as it is for today's church, who scorns this requirement for you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice in view of God's great mercy to you in sending his Son. And because they took the offerings that were designated for the Lord, they robbed God. And you rob God. He wants to have all of you, and you say, no, I'm not going to let you have it. So you rob him. Eli joined them in their sin by eating what they brought back. And that was from 1 Samuel 2.29. I say again, Eli and his sons sinned by kicking at the Lord's requirements for sacrifice. Therefore, they didn't know him, couldn't hear from him. They had the office of priest, just like many have the office of pastor. Many have the office of apostle, of prophet, of evangelist, of teacher but they do not know the Lord because they sin. They have kicked at the sacrifice he requires, thus they still sin, and thus they are in his eyes just as guilty as Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas. O oh, sinning church, those who lie to you and tell you it's all right to sin, God understands those who do that, and you yourself are satisfying your own lusts, just like Hophni, Phinehas, and Eli did. Because you continue to sin. They made themselves their own God. They said, oh God, I'm not going to pay attention to you. I'm going to do what I want. That's making yourself your own God. That's what they did. And it is because like them, you have kicked at his commandment regarding offering yourself as a living sacrifice. And what follows, that you would stay and wait to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, in case you think, this is just for the Old Testament, I have spoken these scriptures to you before, but I'll remind you of them. Philippians 3.18 for many walk, of whom I often told you, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, that is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. You are his enemy. 
because you have kicked at the sacrifice he requires and live for your own lusts. You live for what you want to do, not what he commands you to do. Your glory is your shame means you have glorified yourself above God, and therefore you will be put to shame by Jesus Christ when you stand before him in the day of judgment. You know better than him. That's what you tell him. Oh, I don't need that. I don't have to obey you in this. Hophni and Phineas were just glad to have all that extra meat that they wanted and the fat too, which was very flavorful. The very best. That's what they wanted. Never mind God. We just kick at his offering. He will shame you when you stand before him in the day of judgment. You're as bad as Hophni and Phineas who were sons of the devil because you're refusing him even though you have been told the truth by me many times. And listen to Peter. This is what you should have done. First Peter 4, one. Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same purpose because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased to sin. I say it again, ceased to sin. Verse 2, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. These were not living for the will of God. If they were living for the will of God, they would never take the sacrifices that were supposed to be for the Lord, that he had established as a law, were supposed to be his. They wouldn't have done it. They live for the lust of men. So do you if you kick at his sacrifice that he requires from you. So Hophni and Phinehas blatantly defied the Lord. Even openly having sex with the women who tended to everything around the tent of meeting where the Ark of the Covenant was. They would openly have sex with them outside the tent of meeting at the doorway. And that's from 1 Samuel 2.22. And I say this to you, O sinning church, you openly have sex with the world system that defies God unless you have obeyed him and not kicked at his commandments regarding the spirit which begin with you offering yourself as a living sacrifice. So what did Eli do when he heard the report about the women? He hadn't said a peep about the meat because he was eating it and he liked it. But listen to his rebuke about them having sex with the women openly, just outside the tent of meeting. 1 Samuel 2.24, No, my sons, for the report is not good, which I hear the Lord's people circulating. Verse 25, If one man sins against another, God will mediate for him. But if man sins against the Lord, who can intercede for him? But they would not listen to the voice of their father. For the Lord desired to put them to death. The report is not good. Sounds like Eli was more concerned about how everything looked than what he himself was joining them in doing. He was concerned for his own reputation. Sons, don't do this. You'll make me look bad. But he did tell them that he couldn't pray for them because there was no way they could become right with God unless they did a one-on-one with him. And they weren't about to do that. They were defiant. They were sons of hell. They did as their father, the devil, did. Defying God. Mocking God. Hophni and Phinehas refused to listen. They didn't repent. Eli didn't repent for eating what was supposed to be sacrificed to the Lord.
And they did all these things because they did not know the Lord. And they did not know the Lord because they sinned against the Lord. You will not know the Lord until you obey him and offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Then he will crucify your sin nature and purify your heart. And he and the Father and the Spirit will come in fully and dwell you. Then, then you will be right with him and you will be of great use to him. You will be his witness here, one through whom the world will know that the Father sent the Son. But you cannot do that in your current condition because you are defying him and kicking at the first step, offering yourself as a living sacrifice. So you reveal that you don't know him because you don't obey him, you sin against him. There was no repentance among Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas. And I don't hear any repentance in the church. I don't hear anyone say, oh my goodness, Pastor Sue, you're right. You go on with what you like to believe, what is comfortable for you to believe, instead of believing what this word says. I, these are not my opinions. This is not my philosophy. This is God's word. A man of God came to Eli because Eli couldn't hear. And so that man of God spoke the truth because he was of God, sent by God to Eli. 1 Samuel 2.29, the man of God said this, why do you kick at my sacrifice and at my offering which I have commanded in my dwelling and honor your sons above me by making yourselves fat with the choicest of every offering of my people Israel? What's happening when you say, no, I don't need to offer myself as a living sacrifice, O sinning Christian? What's happening? You honor yourself above the Lord. You know about him. That's the state of most of today's so-called church. But you don't know him. You don't hear from him. Because you have kicked at his requirement for you to sacrifice yourself spiritually. That is your spiritual act of worship. Do you not know? Anything else that you do in the church, all the singing, all the Praising all the praying, all the preaching is nothing if you haven't obeyed him and have kicked at what he says you must do. So you honor yourself above the Lord by kicking at his command to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Even after hearing from the man of God, these very words from the man of God, Eli still did not remove his sons from their office. It does not seem, from what I can see, it does not seem that if someone is found sinning, that they are removed. Remove the wicked one from among you. I have spoken to you just recently. That's what you're supposed to do. But I see wicked ones in the pews, and I see wicked ones in the pulpits, and all the way up to ministry headquarters. Shame on you. You will be shamed when you stand before him, because you glory in all that you do. Oh, I'm doing this for Jesus. I'm doing that for Jesus. You haven't done it. You haven't obeyed him in that one thing. To offer yourself as a living sacrifice, you've kicked at it. But you remain in your positions, you remain in the pews, you are not taken out so that Satan can have at you until you repent. So, you defy him. Who else defies him? Satan. Who are you listening to? Satan. He's having his way with you. And the Lord is angry at you 
because there's no need for that. He has given you the way to be clean on the inside, so there's nothing Satan can grab onto. But you have disobeyed, so you don't hear him because you have disobeyed him. You just listen to Satan all the time, like I used to. So what is the consequence? Once again, if you do not repent and obey his commandments regarding the Spirit, and do not offer yourself as a living sacrifice, he will judge you, and he will sentence you to hell on the day that you stand before him. Here's what happened to Eli's sons from 1 Samuel 4.10. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent and the slaughter was very great for there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Verse 11, and the ark of, the, of God was taken. The ark of God was taken. His presence was removed. He removed his protection over them. He allowed the Philistines to remove the symbol of his presence. And both Hophni and Phinehas died. The Lord had set them up to die. That was his judgment of them. And his judgment happened because they were sons of hell who defied him. And as for Eli, would he escape the judgment of the Lord? Not at all. No one escapes his judgment. He heard the report of what had happened, that the ark had been taken. 1 Samuel 4.18, When he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell off the seat backward beside the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died, for he was old and heavy. Thus he judged, that is, led Israel for 40 years. The Lord saw to it that that was the end of Eli, too, for they had defied him. And he had responded by letting the enemy have at them and removing his presence, the ark. Now, he put plagues upon the Philistines, so they very quickly returned the ark. But the point here is that you will not at all and cannot in any way claim that he is in you when you have defied him by disobeying his command that you offer yourself as a living sacrifice, which is holy and pleasing to God. No other worship will suffice. You must offer yourself. That is your spiritual act of worship. So again, if you don't do it, he'll judge you, and you will go to hell. So after Eli died, this is the good part. The Lord did not leave Israel without a faithful servant to lead them. One who would speak his truth. He always sends his faithful servants. He always does. Whether the people listen makes no difference. He has sent them, they have spoken, and the words of his faithful servants stand as a testimony against those who disobey. The man who came to see Eli told Eli in as many words, that he was not a faithful servant, but that God was going to send one. Listen, 1 Samuel 2.35, But I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and my soul, and I will build him an enduring house, and he will walk before my anointed, his son. Always. Who was this faithful priest? a young child named Samuel, whose mother, Hannah, had dedicated him to the Lord as soon as she had weaned him. She took him to Eli and said, Here, he is to serve the Lord all of his days, because I was barren 
and the Lord gave me him. He gave her more children after that. But he was dedicated from that point, young. But he heard from God and obeyed him. That's what Samuel did. When the Lord first spoke to him, he thought it must be Eli. He had never heard the Lord before. He was young. And so he went to Eli, and after a couple times back and forth, Eli finally realized that that was the Lord that was speaking. And so he knew what should be done when the Lord speaks and instructed Samuel. Samuel 3.9, And Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you will say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. So the Lord came and stood in verse 10 and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. What wonderful words. If you have obeyed his commandments, his requirement for you to sacrifice yourself spiritually to him, then certainly you will hear him say wonderful truths to you. And you will say, speak for your servant is listening and he will answer and you will hear. And the Lord spoke to Samuel and through Samuel to faithfully exhort and warn Israel for 40 years. And I tell you the truth, even though the ones who lead today's so-called church sin and lead you to think you can continue to sin without any consequences, there are faithful Samuels today who hear his voice, who say, speak for your servant is listening and hear his voice. And they will speak the truth, regardless of the consequences. The Lord has made me his faithful servant because I have obeyed and have offered myself as a living sacrifice. I do not kick at this, but I'm thankful to do it for him. Go and do the same, and you will hear him. But if you refuse, he will judge you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name, amen. The fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth more workers to accomplish his plan and pour out his spirit.